retraces Max's career. The face of Max Robinson is well known in Washington, but few know the private man who spends his mornings painting. His story and that of his career tells a story about Washington, a story of growth for a man, a city, and a news town. To the commuter, Anacostia is just another highway sign along the expressway. From his speeding car, it probably appears to be a pleasant and peaceful community. Even a closer look might not reveal the smoldering discontent of many poor black people in mid-Anacostia. I'm Max Robinson, NBC News. It was after many years of unrest erupted into a clash between citizens and police last August that I came here to live. This program grew out of my experiences during that residence. Our story is not so much about Negroes and poverty as it is a story told by poor black people living on the outskirts of American society. This documentary, The Other Washington, produced for WRC in 1967, won Max Robinson an Emmy and established him as a newsman in this city. At that time, Washington was racially polarized. Max stood out as a talented black man with great potential as a broadcast journalist. In the late 60s, a black journalist in this city's newsrooms stood alone. I had a lot of doors slammed in my face by people who, who were really indignant because I would even suggest that a person of my color I could get into something like this, you know. My mother and father taught me that people who would make a distinction based on color, who would shut you out or attempt to shut you out, because no one, uh, we were never taught that anyone would be able to do that effectively, mm -hmm. who would attempt to shut you out, are people who are beneath you, you know. And they really taught us that. And so we, we, that was an indignation on our part, you know, and anger at this foolishness. Uh, at that time, I really related racism to ignorance. Max had 35 jobs before he really began to build his broadcasting career. He DJed for radio for a while, but he wanted television. And on the strength of his voice, he became a narrator in television. He was fired from a Portsmouth, Virginia station when he did the news on camera, rather than just as the voice. A training program at WTOP brought Max to Washington, where he started as a floor director. He worked his way up to a cameraman reporter. Then WRC hired him as a reporter and he appeared on Meet the Press and the Today Washington Show. WTOP hired him back, this time as an anchorman. Richmond, Virginia is Max's hometown, where both his parents were well known. Max's mother was president of Church Women United and a well-known speaker. She challenged Max in the public speaking forum. His father, for whom he's named, was a hero, an athlete, and a high school coach. He challenged Max on the playing field. I was very interested in athletics, but not really. I was interested because I wanted to please my father and because the whole society uh, and community in which I live expected me as the son of the great athlete and coach Maxie Robinson to be, you know, that. And I struggled very hard. I really did. Were you a good athlete? I was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I was terrible. I think, I think though, that, that the intensity of my struggle caused me to play third string basketball for my father. It would have been second string on any other team. When you were young, did you really want to be a journalist? Did you sort of dream about that kind of thing? I was interested in journalism when I was a kid. Uh, electronic journalism, particularly. I never was particularly interested in newspapers. I think it had to do with the town I lived in. In Richmond, I'm not trying to put a rap on, on, on Richmond newspapers as such, but uh, those were the days of segregation, and newspapers weren't, uh, you know, great symbols of welcome <laughs> to any of us. But uh, Edward R. Murrow, you know, was terribly impressive to me. What was it like in the, day, the early days of television journalism when you did your own film work and, you know, and, and were the reporter? Tell me a little bit well, about Well, that was a little different. That was also a program. Incidentally, this whole time I'm making $50 a week. <laughs> it was very difficult. I had a, a wife and two children at the time. Things have changed, though. Yes, I have four children. <laughs> <laughs> Max's youngest, Malik, is just under two. He is one of three sons and a daughter. Max met his wife, Beverly, through his brother, a D.C. attorney. The extended Robinson family is now very much a part of the Washington community. Max and Beverly leave their Rock Creek Park home for Chicago reluctantly. Both have spent a lot of time here in what Max's mother calls their treehouse. 
Home is for entertaining family and friends, which they do often. But home is also a gallery in which hangs the works of the painter Max Robinson. Painting is very meaningful to me. Very meaningful to me. As I got into it, I found out how meaningful it was to me. Uh, it's a very, very good way of, first of all, concentrating totally and being in touch with myself. You know, I think all of us in this business should to have at least one other thing to do <laughs> to, keep, to keep this business for us in perspective. Max's artistic life began with this realistic portrait of his first son, Mark, who is now 14 years old. His last works have grown into abstractions, bold, colorful, and joyful. Max is a man of many colors and dimensions, anxious for new ideas and challenges. In his art, symbol is an important element, so too in his life. He is a man whose resume reveals a string of firsts, but Max Robinson strives for something more. I agree with uh, the late Chappy Jane's mother, who said she had no patience for first black and only black because it indicated the sickness in the country, and it does. And so I approach it. That's why I hate it. Not so much as the, the symbol. What's it a symbol of? It's a symbol that uh, took us until 1978 to do it. You know, I don't think we can be very proud of that. I would hope that soon we will grow up in this country not to have to be able to do that kind of uh, that kind of thing I don't run away from it you know i don't want anyone ever to make the mistake of thinking i'm anything but extremely proud to be a member of this family you know family of uh, african americans africans across the world it's a tremendous ancestry there you know and uh, i am sure that it's been very helpful to me but i'm not a racial chauvinist either you know, and I don't believe in any kind of chauvinism. Uh, my wife tells me sometimes I'm a male chauvinist, <laughs> but I'm working on it. <laughs> Max Robinson, one of the profiles of Washington. Before we go, you should know that WTOP-TV is providing the Howard University School of Communications with $2,500 to initiate a Max Robinson scholarship fund. I think I'll do this. Anyone interested in contributing to a continuing fund for the education of students interested in our business should write to the Max Robinson Scholarship Fund in care of WTOP-TV, 4001 Brandywine Northwest, Washington, D.C., 20016. Chicago, get ready. That's Seven terrific. years. That's terrific. It's been real joy. And, uh... Two all of you. for me. Yes, you newcomer. You right. <laughs> One then. Oh, yeah, old timer. It's been 14 years for us. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's been a real joy. Oh, my God. Uh, everybody's here <laughs> now. We're going to leave here now and have a little party. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> everyone. Steve. Uh, Good to see you. Keep it up.